Bonding in coordination compounds. Werner's theory was the first to explain the bonding in coordination complexes, but in the later years, new theories like the valence bond theory, the ligand field theory, and the molecular orbital theory were able to throw more light on the properties of complexes, for example, their geometry, the color, and their magnetic properties. The valence bond theory. The valence bond theory developed to explain the properties of coordination compounds was by Pauling. Pauling had several points to note. The first point he made was that the central metal ion which is going to form complexes must have vacant orbitals which can form coordinate bonds with the suitable ligands. The second point, depending on the number of bonds to be formed, the central metal ion can utilize its orbitals, maybe the d, s or p orbitals to form hybridized orbitals of equivalent energy which can now accept the lone pairs from ligands. The third point, the hybridized orbitals of the central metal ion can now overlap with the orbitals of the ligand to form a bond. The outer orbital complexes, that is the high, end, high spin complexes or the inner orbital complexes, the low spin complexes are formed depending on whether the metal ion has used its outer or the inner orbitals, d orbitals to form bonds with the ligands. The outer orbital complexes, that is the high spin complexes or the inner orbital, that is the low spin complexes are formed depending on whether the central metal ion has used its outer d orbitals or the inner d orbitals to form hybridized orbitals. We shall now look at some examples to illustrate these points. The first case is of hexaamine chromium 3 ions. In this, the chromium ion is in a plus 3 oxidation state and has got a configuration of 3d3. In order to form 6 bonds with the ammonia molecules, two d orbitals, one s and three p orbitals will undergo hybridization to form six d2 sp3 hybridized orbitals pointing towards the six ends of a hexagon. The six ammonia molecules then donate a pair of electrons into each of the vacant orbitals. Consequently, the structure is octahedral. As there are three unpaired electrons in the orbitals of chromium 3 ion, the complex will be paramagnetic. The formation of this complex involves the d orbitals of the inner shell and hence this complex is called the inner orbital or the low energy complex. Next we should consider the case of hexafluorocobaltate 3 ion. In this complex, the cobalt is in the excited state and has an outer electronic configuration of 3D6. Since fluoride ion provides a weak ligand, therefore 1S, 3P and 2 4D orbitals hybridize to give the sp 3 d 2 hybridized orbitals pointing towards the 6 ends of an octahedron. The complex thus has an octahedral geometry. Now these hybridized orbitals can accept the lone pair of electrons from six fluoride ions to form the complex which has an octahedral geometry. The presence of unpaired electrons in the 3D orbital makes the complex paramagnetic. As is seen over here, it is the d orbitals of the outer shell which are involved in the formation of hybridized orbitals and in bonds with the ligands. Therefore, this is called an outer orbital or a high spin complex. Though the valence bond theory has successfully explained several properties of complexes, it is a very qualitative approach to describe the bonding in complexes. Moreover, it fails to explain the optical absorption spectra and the magnetic properties of some complexes.